Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 18.6 RC, or Release Candidate. iOS 18.6 RC is available to developers and public beta testers on all iOS 18 supported devices, from the iPhone XR all the way up to the iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max. And an RC is the final version that's released to developers and beta testers, and if there's no additional issues, they'll release that to the public in about a week or so. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. However, if you're on iOS 26 beta 3, you won't see this update as you're on a newer version. If you wanted to use this update, you would need a computer to downgrade from iOS 26 betas to iOS 18.6. Now this came in at 7.65 gigabytes on the iPhone 16 Pro Max and was about the same size on the other devices you see here. Along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 18.6 RC, macOS 15.6 RC, tvOS and HomePodOS 18.6 RC, VisionOS 2.6 RC, watchOS 11.6 RC, and older updates such as iPadOS 17.7.9 RC as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 22G84. There is no letter at the end, meaning this is a release candidate build. And if there's no additional issues, this will be the same build released to the public. You'll see it says this update includes improvements and bug fixes for your iPhone. We'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. Now, as far as anything else that's new, well, first I wanted to mention that it says beta four with the software update page for over the air updates. So if you're going to software update on the phone, you'll see iOS 18. 18.6 beta 4. However, with the build number and what they've listed online, it is the RC or release candidate. So they made a mistake there and you can see it's the same build number 22G84. As far as new features and updates, well, there is no new modem update on this particular update coming from beta three to the RC. However, coming from iOS 18.5 to iOS 18.6 RC, there is a modem update. So hopefully we'll see some improvements there, but I don't see any difference as far as that goes with the RC update. Now, as far as new features, the first thing you may have noticed if you installed this update or you haven't yet is you'll get the hello screen again. I saw this on every device that I updated and heard from many of you that it showed up as well. So you'll get that. You'll have to go through a quick setup again and you'll see that there. It's nothing major, but just something I wanted to note. As far as features in here, while well, Apple has only said bug fixes and security updates, and you'll see on Apple's developer website, it says installing marketplaces from the web. This is basically to be in compliance with the European Union standards with regards to third-party apps and third-party app stores. So you can see what it may look like here. Now, I wasn't able to get any of you to try and install this and see these different splash screens, but it does look like it may be updated here. So it basically brings it into compliance. I'll link this in the description below. And instead of giving you a bunch of warnings, it now has some updates here that look a little bit different. So that's one of the things that's updated. The code also hint at some updated air tags. However, that being a physical product, we don't see that just yet, but basically we could have better finding capability, maybe better battery life, and maybe even better range as well. But at this point they haven't released them, but it does look like some of the code may be contained in here as well. There's also some enterprise updates we could see, but Apple doesn't typically update that until they release it to the public. If we go to my bookmarks here under Apple's website for what's new in enterprise, we'll probably see this updated after it releases to the public. They typically have quite a few things they release and we'll probably see that with iOS 18.6 as well. Also something else that was thought to be coming to iOS 18.6 is Apple intelligence in China. However, so far I haven't heard from anyone in China that says that it's there. It was not there with previous updates. It doesn't seem to be there with this update and I mean previous beta updates. So it looks like they're not including it just yet. And Apple still has to work with different companies there to implement that. So let me know if you're in China and you're seeing it and they've enabled it yet, but so far I haven't had confirmation of that. Other small changes that may be new that you might see the first time you go into apps are things such as splash screens. I saw this in the journal app here, just talking about updates to the journal app, even though it's not significant. Also, if we go and maybe into reminders here in reminders, I had a splash screen. This seems to be an old splash screen, but it showed up again. And then also if we go into fitness, there was one. And also there was another one for voice memos. So I got splash screens in all of these apps. So let me know if you're seeing this as well. 
as far as other updates today, well, Apple did update its sports app. So if you're using the Apple sports app and it's available in your country, which it is available in more countries. Now you'll see here with the update today, it says follow the FA community shield as champions of the premier league and the FA cup face off at Wembley to start the season. Also new stats have been added to box scores, making it easier to see how your favorite players are performing. It's also available in Mexico now. So if you've been wanting to try this app out and you're in Mexico, you should have access to it. So hopefully we'll see that roll out to more countries soon. Also, it seems that the British government is backing down on forcing Apple to add a backdoor to the software. So this is great news as many had suspected that Apple just may not release some new features if they're going to have to implement this. So it looks like they're backing off on that and that's great news, keeping your phone more private and secure. Apple is also said to be starting work soon on iOS 27. We have iOS 26 that they're still working on, and usually they have different teams working on different versions, getting features ready, and then starting work on that as well. As far as bug fixes this time around, well, I've heard from at least a couple of you that mail is working now on the iPad. So if it wasn't working before, mail seems to be working properly if you're using the mail app. Also micro stutters so far are gone, whether that's in third party apps, ProMotion is smooth. Also notifications seem to be fixed and scroll properly. There's no stutters so far and it seems incredibly smooth and it should be at this point in the year. So it definitely seems to be a lot better, has less freezes and crashes. However, only time will tell with that and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity seem to be good so far. There is that wallpaper dimming bug though. And if I scroll up, it's less noticeable on this update, but it seemed to be very noticeable in beta three. So let me know if you're seeing that or if it's fixed for you. When it comes to their release notes, well, this seems to be a bit ridiculous as well. So if we scroll over here, go into their release notes on the public facing release notes, it's the same as beta three. So basically nothing listed except for a known issue with health data, where it says health data becomes inaccessible when you reach the slide to power off page on an iPhone or iPad without a passcode to fix it add a passcode or reboot the device. So it's a bit disappointing to see very few notes. Hopefully with the final release, they'll update the notes, give us more information. But at this point, it's not looking good as far as that goes. Also, we expect some security releases. Again, Apple does not update this until after it's released to the public. So we can expect an update here as well with any of the new releases. So whether that's iPadOS 17.7.9 or iOS 18.6. As far as when to expect iOS 18.6 to release to the public, well, at this point, I would expect it on July 28th. Usually it's a week or so later after the RC. So if there's no RC2 later this week, there's no additional issues, we could expect an update typically on a Monday. So I would expect it on July 28th releasing to the public. As far as iOS 18.7 beta one, we could see that next week as well. If they're going to continue to work on that, they typically do until the release of iOS 26 and then continue to work on that for older phones that aren't supported. So we'll probably see something along those lines iOS 26 beta four is expected probably Tuesday or Wednesday at this point, along with iOS 26 public beta. So at this point, I would expect it sometime this week. If Apple makes sure it's stable enough, gets everything ready to go, we could see it sometime tomorrow or Wednesday. That's what I would count on, but we never know as Apple could delay it if they find additional issues. When it comes to performance so far, as I mentioned before, it seems to be stutter free, very fast and smooth. ProMotion is nice and fast and smooth. And of course, this feels like it's the best version of iOS ever. And it should be at this point. It's been almost a year and you'll see that it opens and cl closes quickly. We go into different mail apps. This is Mercury weather. If I slide over, go into the regular mail app, everything's loading very, very fast. So this is great to see. Hopefully it stays this way over time. When it comes to heat, there's barely any heat on the back of the phone. It seems to be staying nice and cool, which is not typical of iOS 26 right now. So definitely a nice change there. And when it comes to battery life, well, using it full time, many people have been saying it's excellent battery life on beta three. So time will tell with this update, but if we take a look quick, Thanks to Cameron for sending this in on an iPhone 16 Pro Max with 100% battery health. You'll see he had three hours and 34 minutes of screen active time, 41 minutes of screen idle time, and only was down to 71%. Typically 11 or 12 hours of screen on time on his phone, and it's pretty phenomenal so far. So most people, in fact, over the weekend on the YouTube community poll, not one person said that iOS 18.6 had poor battery life. So I think that's a new record as far as that goes. As far as if you should install iOS 18, 
18.6 RC. At this point, if you want to try it out, this should be the stable version that releases to the public unless there's additional issues, but just be aware that it is technically still in beta, but it seems to be very stable and quite good. So if you were having issues with iOS 18.5, now would be a good time to try this out. I would hold off though for iOS 26 public beta on your main device. So if you don't have that already, maybe hold off, try out this version and see how it goes for you. I did run benchmarks and they're pretty good overall. 3,521 for single core, 8,719 for multi-core. So that's everything with iOS 18.6 RC. Let me know if you found anything different or noticed anything different or how it's going for you on your device. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.